Will we hear the sound effects today, darling, or no, darling? Uh, let I don't me know, think darling. we'll hear the sound effects today, darling. No, I've got to, I'll put that all in post. I'll do that all in post. Oh, you do it in post, darling. I'll put you it, do it in post. I'll put it in. I'll put it in the post. I'll send it off in the post, and hopefully it'll get to you. Um, right. Well, actually, I'm soon. changing addresses, um, so I'm not sure it will get to me, darling. I wish you would change your dress because that fucking stinks. Don't. Oh. I'm a bit grouchy this morning, as you can tell, because guess why? It's I've been up since four a.m. Four a.m. Painted my face. Pain to my face to be here live in full drag recording this podcast for you at this hour. Because I don't know if you know, listener, but I'm all the way down under in Australia. She Not is. The thing is with you, Tits, what? is your face already looks like it could be down under. You know? Upside down. Mm. Some might yeah. say mm. horrible, horrible makeup. The way you turn me. Uh, but I... <laughs> I am actually in Florida. Yeah, you're a good old 16 hours behind in the past. And I will tell you, coming from the future, I can confirm you're still a twat. Right. Okay, let's get going, shall we? It's like nothing's passed. (laughs) I know, girl. Hi, welcome back. You'll have to excuse, obviously, my voice. I've been up quite early, so I'm still getting that coffee and a croissant for my breakfast. But she is the little toe that's hanging out the side of the sandal. It is, of course, Miss Georgie Porgy. Oh, stop it. And she's like the mould frozen on a loaf of bread, Miss Titty Kaka. <laughs> Hello. Good to be back. Hi, how we doing? Yeah, I'm good. Honestly, the funny thing is, yes. people might think we've taken yeah. a break from the podcast but realistically we've <laughs> taken a break from each other uh <laughs> we really have if i was looking back if you look back in our messages like on our whatsapp the last message we sent must have been about like a month ago people think that we catch up in between episodes we really don't i can't stand that bitch when i tell you obviously even the the you know hearing your voice through my headphone mm. is making me physically sick <laughs> <laughs> um, it's quite great in like a block of cheese. Well, speaking of great in like a block of cheese, what the hell are you wearing? Because that stinks. Well, it's interesting you mentioned cheese actually, um, mm. because I am actually um, wearing a full camembert. Oh, um, right. So what I've done is I've taken some plywood yeah. and I've put it into a circle. <laughs> right. That's a shape, Titty. Oh, right. Um, it's the shape of Martina Brookshire. Yeah. And I've put it into a circle. <laughs> uh-huh. And I've attached on the front and the back hmm. a Camembert logo. Of course, it's Waitrose. You of know, of course it is. Um, yeah. Got to keep it classy, girl. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to be wearing nothing from Morrison's, Absolutely am I? Not. Um, yes. And by the looks of it, on the head, she's got a bang, and that's a copyright infringement. Wow! I see the jokes have got better over yes. our pause. Yes. Um, <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid bitch. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, it's disgusting. I oh. can't. Bree, leave it. <laughs> oh. um, but I have got a well, bag. You look lovely. You know, Thank I, you just, for I just want to put you in the oven. I do want to put you in the oven. That's all I want to do. And what would you dip in me, darling? Absolutely nothing. All oh, right. Uh, for me, thanks for asking. What am I wearing? Well, in true spirit of being at Down Under, um, I'm completely naked. I've just got a koala bear wrapped around my nether region, so you can't see anything. And I think that's for the best. I think not being able to see anything. On a body type like yours, <laughs> which some might say is a cheese string from Target that's been left out in the rain. Yeah. Um, I would yeah, say that's yeah. probably for the best, Titty. It's left out with the rain. Yeah. yeah. And what's on your feet? I'm interested because I feel like you've changed it up. Well, I have changed it up. I've got a Laduka character shoe instead of a Laduka <laughs> boot this time. Right, right, yeah. right. Well, of course, Titty, um, yes. um, they're never going to see these outfits, are they? Why not? Well, that's because you don't update the Instagram. No, they're never going to see these outfits because we, we we can't use a camera phone. No. Yeah, we don't know how to take a picture of ourselves. anyway. You'll have to imagine it best you can. Yes. Right. Well, Titty, um, I wanted to chat to you because, mm. as you did mention 500 times in the intro, you are in Australia. Yeah. You're in Australia. You'll not hear me bang on about it, but I am currently sailing around the Tasmanian Sea. Yeah. Yes. Um, first of all, have you seen any Tasmanian devils? No, nope, I have not. Tasmanian bears, more like love. Well, fingers crossed. And you're with, you're down under with um, our friend who's from down under, friend of the podcast, Jake the Foodie, I hear. Well, friend is quite a stretch of the term, but yes, Jake's here with 
with us. Colleague. Uh, colleague, at best. And, uh, yeah, um, he's obviously, this is his stomping ground. Yes. And he's, um, yes, on on the ship, the same ship that I am. And like I said, Georgie Porgy is over there on a different ship, uh, 16 hours in the past, all the way over in lovely sunny Miami. So we have really banded together to get this podcast episode out because I just want to say... Um, it's very rare, you know, it's a once in a lifetime occurrence that something like this happens. And um, the minute it did happen, I just said to George, I was like, listen, we, I, this has got me in a chokehold. We yes. need to talk about this. Absolutely. And I'm sure people have probably been hearing about it because it has gone global, you know. Yeah. And um, when I tell you I am absolutely, I'm violently obsessed with it. And this is the only news story that I want to hear about for the next month. We need to know. Um, we need to know. Let's give the listener a few clues. Oh, Should oh, we give them a good, few oh clues? yeah, let's give them a few Scooby Doo clues. Yes. It's time so. for pop culture clues. It's time for <laughs> pop culture clues, blues, Scooby Doo's, and shoes with yes. Miss Titty Carcar and Georgie Poo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't expose my government name, you nasty bitch. Sorry, darling. Clue number one. Clue, Clue number one, one is. Um, I'm going to give them a tune, Titty. Mm. I'm not going to say the words, just the tune. Are you ready? Ooh, it goes like this. Okay, I am ready. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, that's enough yep. copyright infringement. Uh, clue number two yes. is perhaps I might be wearing a green bob wig. Oh. Mm. And then oh. our last clue um, very much fits one of our <laughs> sisters, Carlos, a woman named Carlos, is I'm wearing very orange foundation. Yes. That uh, might a be shade a, clue a bit for you. too dark for my actual race. Yes, there we go. Correct. Can you guess that meme? I can hear the, the listeners shouting out as we speak. It is, of course, we are talking about the Willy Wonka experience that happened over the weekend in Glasgow. Oh, And my I really God. want to use the word experience with every, you know, use of its uh, connotation of its word because the this picture is harrowing in my mind and it is the <laughs> of the poor girl dressed in the in the pal shop umpa lumpa costume with the green wig no the funniest thing is is it's now been revealed that it's actually the sexy version of it as well <laughs> and it was 4.99 <laughs> Four ninety nine from Smithies, and the wig was from Poundland. I just can't handle it. Well, I thought I just can't handle it. I was thinking that you must have known her because I'm sure I've seen you in that wig before. Well, actually, what I'm this is you. interesting. What happened, Titty? I was wearing the wig. Uh-huh. The wig blew off. Yeah. I was walking down a high street on the Isle of Wight, and yeah. the wig blew all off all the way up to the. It north happened of to land. Yeah. Correct. Um, it landed in a sandwich bag. Uh-huh. The sandwich bag then flew to Scotland. When right. it arrived in Scotland, the nice people of Poundland stuck a pound sticker on it, and that was that. That was, you know, the end of story, really. And she- you need to, you need to see this picture because she has just had all of the life drained out of her, and she, it literally. Oh, it's so. Some funny. of the comments on Instagram, it's like she looks like she's cooking meth. She looks like she's had enough, and this is this is this has gone global. Now I fell down a rabbit hole last night. Of she's made a TikTok, and now she's like, "Hi, I'm the girl. You know, I'm the Umpalumpa girl." Oh, it's so funny! Incredible, and she's been on Good Morning Britain. So a, par- a bit of backstory for those of you that have been living under a rock for the past two days. Yeah. Um, a company I want to say is it called the House of Illuminati or something like this? Yes. Has, um, claimed to put on like a, a Willy Wonka inspired event, an immersive event, which. <laughs> Um, it, just incredible uh, in Glasgow in the middle of this what can only be described as a, a derelict warehouse and they the oh you know the creator of the event has apparently used AI to generate all the posters to generate all the scripts so did you see the spelling mistakes Titty? the spelling mistakes mama I'm like for people who have seen this poster and bought tickets you can't you can't blame the writing was on the wall and it was spelt wrong and you couldn't even eat it no mama there was apparently there was not one piece of candy <laughs> available <laughs> well there was no chocolate there was no, no. chocolate no <laughs> apparently what they were saying is she had and she got told to ration each child one jelly bee. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a there's a video of um, this girl dressed as the Umpa Lumpa kneeling down and um, giving this child, you know, I think she rationed him two jelly beans. I thought, oh God, she's... And that's not the best part. The best part is because this script was AI generated, it apparently created this other character called the Unknown, um, 
which is basically it was but this. The thing with that, <laughs> the thing with that is, I before you go on, I just want to start off by saying, of course, use AI. You know, use AI. Why not? It's there to be used. Right. They did have spelling mistakes um, in the um, thing, Poster. much like one of my favourite spelling mistakes that they wrote is that they wrote that it would be in catching tunes <laughs> instead of catchy tunes. And um, ever strandre lollipop, um, and a pa- parasite of oh. sweet treats, um, which is one of my favourites. But then the thing is with the unknown <laughs> yeah. is if you get given a script by AI, the first thing you do is at least fucking check yeah. that the character is real before you go ahead and buy the wig. Before you buy the silver mask. Before you buy the black flag. You would at least expect that you have bloody... I'm sorry, I'm very passionate about this titty, you know. I Um, can't can't deal with it. Honestly, you should be checking that the character is real. The best thing about (laughs) it is because the character's not real, AI called it the unknown. The unknown. So, and honestly, it's the icon. icon. The unknown is an icon of 2024, let me tell you. And... The, just to preface this, they were in like this sparse warehouse with, you know, statues of candies and lollipops and it was really few and far between. And there was just this a performer dressed in a black cloak, a black ratty wig and a silver mask hiding behind a mirror, jumping out and screaming children. Now, I'm, if that's not the epitome of Disney magic, I don't know what is and I don't want to know. But all I'm saying, these families... Someone, someone called the police. So would I. Because the, you know, if the... someone in a silver mask was calling himself the unknown, I think COVID oh, was starting again. <laughs> Honestly. And it's you've just got to watch the video of them trying to because they said they had a chocolate fountain as well that um that was next to it. They had two empty buckets of like marshmallow toppings and you know, something else, and they were the performers really were trying their best of like scooping these together and throwing them on just yes. to give these kids, but. I just thought, if you've seen a picture like that, a poster, you've brushed over the, um, you know, the spelling mistakes and things. You've got a family of four. These tickets were £35 each. Now, that's a lot of money. £35. You know. Honestly. Georgie Porgy gets £35 for a week's work in Manchester. Correct, Mama. Honestly. Yeah. And the f- one of my favourite parts of the whole thing is that because it was inspired by Willy Wonka, they weren't actually really <laughs> supposed to call it Willy Wonka. Right. So Willy Wonka was called <laughs> Willy McDuff. <laughs> Um, which I just think is um, brilliant. And it says here, so, so they asked, the actor that played Willie McDuff, they asked him this question. Okay, so you've got the script for Willie McDuff. Yeah. Tell me more about how it was pitched versus what you actually showed up to. Yeah. His quote was, I thought it was going to be magic. And then when I walked into an empty, cold, dirty warehouse in Glasgow, I thought maybe this was not what had been pitched. And then it says, can you tell me the favourite part of the monologue? And he said, I'd love to. My favourite part, the big part, was when I really just read out nonsensical gibberish that was the following. There is a man, we do not know his name. We do not know him only by the unknown. The unknown is evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. Now listen, walls. that's Shakespeare. Oh, but that is, you know? you know, Lady Macbeth eat your heart out. And I just want to say, all of this, added to the fact that it's going to be in a thick Scottish accent. Oh, I love just it. Absolutely incredible! Absolutely incredible. When I tell you, I just said, to, I said to Georgie, I was like, listen, Mama, we need, we need to bring the podcast back out the woodworks. So you can thank the unknown. You can thank that umpa lumpa lady. And you can thank the House of Illuminati for us coming back into the mainstream media because, the, you know, like I said, it's very rare, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So funny. Absolutely incredible. And the best thing Hats was is that I've seen that they're also advertising that, so we're going to get more content, <laughs> that they're doing a Jurassic World oh. event in Glasgow. Oh, brilliant. Um, that's all AI-generated. Um, they're also going to be doing... A Narnia. I also feel like people are now going to go because it's just going to be absolutely Oh, I love trash. it. And the, the funniest thing was, I was watching a TikTok of a mum yeah. and she said, I've I've spent 200 <laughs> quid on this event. And she went, and then I want a hot yeah. dog and the hot dog's yeah. £11. <laughs> what a joke. She said, that's the smallest bouncy castle I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, God. It's brilliant. I love it. So that... That, that's what I've been keeping myself busy with for the past, you know, few days. Yeah, and I've, li- honestly, I've been going on TikTok every day and I've just been typing in Willy Wonka and seeing what comes up. <laughs> and honestly, I would remec- 
I'd recommend it to anyone. It's absolutely hilarious. 100%. Do you know there was those classic vines back in the day that lived on forever? Darling, <laughs> this is going to be oh, one I of those. So. I want to be 89 Mama, picture... years old. I want to be in the hospice yeah. <laughs> dying of crabs. I wanna, and I want to see this. I want to have a crocheted Umpa Lumpa Meth girl on my pillow. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. Good good for them. And also, the worst thing is the actors, the actors never got paid for any of it, which of course, you know, is awful. Right. But then I think you're not putting on your CV, Mama, are you? Well, I mean, you know? gonna, she's got to be fa- the bloody famous after this. Someone likened to a, a likened her to the the Lady Diana of the Princess Diana of this century. Of Willy, yeah, of the world of Willy Wonka. Bit of a stretch, but um, yeah, I'll take it because that was it. I was following I, one. I think she's called Kelsey, uh, the girl who played the Umpa Lumpa something I saw on TikTok, and she was saying that she got the job application, which was like this acting job on Indeed. Um, and for those of you that don't really know, Indeed's not really a platform that you'd, you know, get or apply for work in the performance industry, I guess. But I love there that. you go. Good. Do you know what? Good for them. I wish them all the best. Good for them. They should put it on their spotlight and call it a night, you know? <laughs> Mum, I'd take that to the bank. You know, there's going to be a mug, there's going to be a T-shirt, there's going to be a hoodie. You want a tattoo? I'm waiting for someone to get a tattoo of that, of her face, because it's incredible. Oh, we all know it's going to be me. So in future, City, if you see House of um, Illuminati advertising anything, we're Look, going. We're tickets. going and we're doing <laughs> the podcast live. Well, we'll be hosting, yeah. We should reach out, actually, to see if they want us to have. Yeah, 100%. What with your tri- triceratop claws, you can be the one for Jurassic World. Oh, for sure. And you can play the gate, that huge gate at the beginning, <laughs> with those shoulders. Yes. Oil me up. Oil me up, darling. From Willy Wonka over to um, some Wales. Oh. Um, now, not Wales, the country. Right. Um, but I wanted to give you some news that um, has recently been released. And by recently, I mean literally yesterday. We're really top on the news we, today, We tits. are on the point, yeah, on the dot. We're on point. And this yes. is humpback whales mm-hmm. have been observed having sex for the first time in a century. Crikey. But the landmark moment had an interesting twist when both the whales were male. <gasps> oh. Gay whales. Gay, gay whales. whales. Gay Who called whale. it? Who called it? Gay whale. I knew it. I knew it. Must have been some of my bathwater seeping out from the ship into the ocean and, uh, you know. I was thinking that. <laughs> but no, I was laughing. And it's actually in, Ho- in Hawaii, darling. Oh. And we all knew that the gays would be on holiday in Hawaii. Oh, God, I'm surprised it's not Gran Canaria. Well, there you are. Mas Palo Mars, yeah. No, of course, it's going to be bloody hot. Hawaii, isn't it? Oh, well, gay whales, there you go. So all these people that say it's not bloody natural, well, just look at that. Just just Mother Nature, that. life finds a way. Mother Nature. Yeah. Um, I just want to read this part to you. Um, this is actually from The Guardian. Mama Nature. Mama Nature, darling. This said, the um, the penises of male humpback whales mm. are usually concealed in what's known as a genital slit. Same. To make it more streamlined yeah. while swimming. That's same for me, though. An unshielved... Shielved? Sh- I'm not sure what that word unsheathed. is. Penis. Unsheathed. Has only been witnessed... <laughs> Sheaved, I think yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. An unsheaved yeah. penis has only been witnessed a small number of times in the past, oh. and normally while whales are urinating. Well, hold on a minute. What? No, what I want to know is what? What is the likelihood of seeing an unsheathed humpback whale penis? Well, you just need unless you're in the vicinity. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you're just walking down the aisle in Morrison's and one pops out from the frozen seafood. section. Well, it is if I'm in you know the I mean? frozen seafood section in Morrison's and I get my dick out, darling. Huge. If you're <laughs> if you're going. If you're going into the lion's den, so to speak, yeah. you're diving in the water, you're hanging around whales, it's only right, if they want to flap, flap their penis out, they should be able to in their own 100%. Home. You know what I 100%. mean? 100%. And the, thing, the worst part of the whole article is it does say that scientists have said that whales can mistake each other's gender, and I think you're making that up. They just wanted to make sweet love. I think that's that's a cop-out. I think it's a cock-out. <laughs> that's a cock-out, mama. An unsheathed penis out Unsheathed whale penis. yeah Crikey. i mean honestly well, there you go. honestly now you know so <laughs> in the space of a week we've had the willy wonka well willy mcduff experience we've and had... now we've got gay <laughs> wells fucking do you know what i mean what's next free darling willy that's what i say hashtag free willy in more ways than one uh- <laughs>
Okay, Titty, it's now time to take that long staircase down as we go below deck. It's a long staircase. Oh, here we go. The elevators it aren't is working. It is broken. Right, broken. Below deck. So this is probably things sent in from, you know, crew members of other cruise lines that have had a uh, intimate experience or something, you know, crazy happening below the waterline. So, Georgie, what have we got this week? Well, this one, I think, Titty Carcotton... Hold on a minute. Can I just stop Can I just stop you there before you carry on? Is that a watertight door closing in the background? Because all I can hear is bloody alarms. It is a watertight door closing. I think it's just finished closing. Oh, well, just as well. We are on... We're, we're below the waterline. And for those of you who don't know on a ship, we have watertight doors. So just in case, you know, a ship gets full of water, the, the doors are watertight. It does what it says on the tent. Well, Titty, um, I've actually had to install one in my room uh, because the way I squirt uh, these <laughs> days, honestly, the watertight door is needed. Honestly, it's like a fucking wave. Um, I've taken out five Indonesian communities in the last week. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Okay, well, now that watertight door's finished closing... Can yes, Mama, here we go. So this oh, one... Things we've got to put up with. This one is written in, and of course, these are all anonymous. And this mm -hmm. says, I recently got a job on board a cruise line mm -hmm. as land life was just not for me anymore. Yes. I didn't know the rule that you can't sleep with guests on board until I was in one of my first trainings. The only problem is I've lived on board for about a month now and I've been shagging the guests left, right and centre. It's become a bit of an addiction. Right. The minute I see they're not wearing a name badge, I instantly need to shag them. Crikey. I've shagged them in elevators, cupboards, housekeeping areas and even in the toilets. I whip my name badge off quicker than I can get it done, just so that I can get frosted. I absolutely love it. Uh, well, I think keep doing it. So tell us, Titty, have you ever had them flirting? Looking like this, walking around open area, you're always going to get people attracted to you like a magnet, aren't you? But I, I just got to bat them away like flies. You, you know? do. and Get away. I've actually get seen Don't it. Don't do it. Don't come close. And I have actually installed in my, my one of the, the costumes that I wear... And it's kind of like the size of a hula hoop around me, but it's just got 16 live tasers right. all the way around. So if anyone gets a bit too close, uh, they do get a bit of a shock, if you know what I mean. Enter at own risk. I just, it's stupid to do because you're going to lose your job. I mean, it's a sticky situation with the law, really, isn't it? It is. And it's a sticky situation all over my back. Well, but I quite. tell you what, the thing with sleeping with a guest is I think if you're going to quit... If you're going to be like, this is my last week on board, and you meet a nice fella, lady, non-binary persons, um, then I think just bloody go for well, it. You really, but I think if you're doing it all the time... Well, bear in mind, you are burning that bridge. You're burning that bridge. You are. Absolutely. You are. But what about what about you, George? If you had people swarming around? Do you know what I have? Um, Stevie Wonder came on board recently, and he really liked the look of me. Mm. Well, your face is a lot like Braille, isn't it? Yeah. It is, love. It is potholes, some might say. Yeah. Uh, Paul Potts mm. going into Celebrity <laughs> Big Brother. Yeah. Um, <laughs> crikey. Crikey. But no, so the thing is, is that um, recently we had a bear cruise on board the ship I'm on. So, Ooh. yes. So, oh, I bet that was tempting. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I didn't realise that I was a proper cub, I think, until that moment. Because oh. they were right. obsessed with me. Well, what did you think you were before? I did think I was a twink until about a week ago and then I got bloated. Delusion. So, right. delusion, yeah. mama. But no, the Bear Cruise was interesting. I, I couldn't walk anywhere. I was like a celebrity. Oh. They were screaming my name. Yeah, you were. Yeah, they were just kind of throwing collars on me, left, right and centre. But it was fabulous. I loved it. But it is a, it's a risky game, isn't it, And it's tits? one I'm not willing to play. Absolutely. Me it's too. Mine. There we go. Well, if you've got a below dick, please feel free to send it through. You know, you don't have to work on a cruise ship it could be a barge it, um, yeah it could be a river a river boat canal boat uh, it could be the willy wonka experience Any, <laughs> it could you know, be maybe, no. maybe they'll do a willy wonka cruise maybe a willy wonka experience oh, cruise a willy a willy mcduff charter yes. cruise. we've got to put that together that would be incredible sounds bloody good to meet it's right should we move on yeah splash well tits before we get um, on to our favorite oh wait a minute you spoke over me no it's you right, fucking bitch <laughs> 
That's strike two. Try it again. Well, before we move on so to our favourite... Go oh, don't oh, start, oh, Titty. Don't it. start. It's a new Come year, on, new you it should be. Spit it out, love. Come on, get going. Titty, can you see something floating on on the, just on the Tasmania Sea? <laughs> I think I can. It's quite rocky, but I think I can just grab the. Oh, oh. let me grab. Oh, oh, get that cork out. Uh, oh. oh, all oh, over me tits. tits. <laughs> oh, <laughs> twins. <laughs> Well, this is a section of the show, if this is your first time listening to Up The After, if it is Grow Up, <laughs> um, where we get a message in a bottle, which is where one of you fabulous um, people ashore, whatever you're called, mm. uh, send us in a letter of concern. Now, this one seems to be, Titty, quite urgent. Oh, dear. Oh, well, and they've written it in red pen. Better get reading, though. It's Come possible on. that it's blood. Yeah, do it. I will. This says, Ahoy, girls. Oh, yeah. At least she knows we're women. Mm. Um, I'm a lesbian called Sandra from Wolverhampton right. and I absolutely love going out on the town. I love bars, I love clubs, I love everything in between. Mm-hmm. The only problem is where I've moved to in Wolverhampton, there's no lesbian bars. So unfortunately, I have to go to the straight bars and clubs. Oh dear. Ugh, gross. Yeah. Her words, not mine. Mm-hmm. Um, I've picked up this gorgeous girl... Mm-hmm. From Birmingham, who was visiting her friends in Wolverhampton. She's got muscles, she's got tattoos, and honestly, I'm obsessed with her. So, I take her back to my travel lodge, (laughs) and we're now in the hotel room. The only problem is, I've been hiding in the bathroom for the last 24 minutes, as I realise, while kissing her, I've just accidentally picked up a man. What do I do? I'm currently stuck in the toilet and I've got no interest. Oh, dear Sandra. What a nightmare. <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound. I, you know, I think you've got yourself into say. the mess. Get yourself out of it by, you know, just shoving it in you for a couple of minutes. I say, as long as as long as long it's, you know, consensual on both parts, go to town. Go to town. Um, and if it's not, if it's not, just thank you so much. The door's over there. The main problem with this, Titty, is mm. I know you probably wouldn't have had any experience staying in a travel lodge because you're a fucking snob. Oh, absolutely um, not. No, it's, but you know, uh, yeah. the travel lodges normally don't have windows in the toilet. <laughs> so there's not even anything she that could, she, she can climb, climb out of. It, yeah. So, yeah. you know, that does make me nervous. She is actually stuck in this room um, with this man um, that maybe has a baby face, maybe it's well, shaved. Well, we don't want to assume, you know, we don't want to assume how they identify. Probably best to not use your time writing a letter, even though it was genius for you to flush it down the toilet to get to us all the way over in Australia. Yes. Um, yes. You know, I just go out, make a cup of tea, maybe throw it down yourself and say, oh, I'm sorry, I need to go and change and just bolt out the door and never come back. Now, there is a little bit of context that she sent as a PS as well. Um, and that says that she right. she has considered throwing herself out the window, but it is on the 11th floor. Um, yeah, and I the nearest really... hospital is quite far. So I'm not sure if that's the best idea that you've ever had. I wouldn't Sandra. condone that. Yes, yeah, I'd probably go for the tea on the tea on the blouse option. To be completely honest. And the, but anyway, do let us know yes, how it goes. Do let okay. us know how it goes. No, I was just going to say, Titty, before you rudely interrupted oh, sorry, me, go you on. fat cow. <laughs> Um, is uh, that I was just going to say, and the last thing you could do is um, me and Titty could ring you Mm -hmm. um, and just pretend there's an emergency at home or something. So let us know. That is a service that we provide for only $33 a month. Yeah. Um, So just kind of let us know and we can always sort that out. But yes, if you do have any issues or problems or something you'd like to write into us about, of course you can just write it on a paper titty, can't you? And then put it in any open water source and and it it should get to us. It will make its way to us. We'll read it out and help you out on the podcast. Or you could just send us a message on Instagram at UpTheAft like everybody else. I wonder if there's any people that have actually just thrown a letter in a bottle in, you know, the canal on Canal Street and just thought, right, that was who down. <laughs> well, that's littering and you can be fined up to $10,000. Correct. So... Correct. Yes. Correct. Correct. Well, Tits, thank you so much for um, finally picking up the phone and making a bit of effort. Listen, any time, the minute I saw that methed out and palumpa, I just had to get on the blower. You know, 
So, as always, I know. more episodes coming soon. Please do leave us a review on um, all of the podcast platforms, wherever you can listen to this podcast. It does help us out greatly. Um, and, of course, you can find us on social media, on Instagram. Where can we find you, Miss Georgie Porgy? You can find me at Miss Georgie Porgy UK. That's because she's never done a gig outside of the country. And you can find me at Titty underscore Car Car. Underscore, because she's very, very underwhelming indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. And, of course, you can follow the podcast at Up The Aft. And also, there's a few links there. If you want to support us and buy us a coffee, uh, please do. You know, throw a few dollars our way, and maybe we can buy Miss Georgie Porgy some less threadbare tights. All right. Okay. I've just washed these, you nasty cow. In what? Chip fat. Chip yeah. fat, you okay. nasty cow. I ringed it out your hair. <laughs> well, thank you so much for listening to Up The Aft. We'll be back very soon. Make sure you subscribe to see when the next episode is out. And you can also, mm. if you're listening on Spotify, you can save us as your favourite podcast oh. one of your favourite podcasts and we'll, and it will appear whenever you, um, there's a new episode and on Apple Podcasts you can click the bell and it will tell you when a new episode is out as well did you know that Tissy you didn't did you silly cow well now I do so everybody else I need to ward it and ring my bell love yeah. it bye, bye. 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 Honestly, Titty, I really didn't know that it was going to blow up. I mean, obviously, I put the mask on and they just told me I was playing a character called The Unknown. Well, listen. But I had no idea that it was going to blow up like that. Well, when you're in the stage of your career, you've got to take any work that you can get, really, haven't you? It's true. So. And honestly, when you're in the stage of this career, it's just best to put a mask on, especially around kids.